everyone welcome again to another review this time we're going to be reviewing something a little bit different um this is actually the first movie we went to in 2018 and it's going to be a western it's going to star christian bale and i should love it and it was okay none other than hostels Hostels is very easily the story of, a, of three different characters. One named Joe, played by Christian Bale, who is a army officer who is charged with taking this Native American who is dying of cancer back to his homeland so he can die. He got a pardon from the United States government and Bale's character is in charge of taking him and his little family home. That's one story. Second story is obviously of the Native American who is kind of just, he knows he's dying. He doesn't want any more hatred. He just wants to go back to his land to die with his family. The third story is where the movie actually starts out with this mother who sees her family get slaughtered by a, a group of Native Americans who don't care who they kill. They'll kill they'll kill white people, they'll kill, you know, African American people, they will kill their own people. If anyone steps on their ground without their permission, they are dead. <clears throat> and so we have this kind of journey movie to get from point A to point B and it's really captivating at times but at times it's also very very dull because a lot of the movie is about just characters whispering to each other if you thought Christian Bale's voice was annoying in the Batman movies it's not annoying here but it is everyone kind of tells it uh, I'm sorry and that's how a lot of this movie is. This movie has a lot of day to night scenes. I think this movie has more night scenes than 30 days of night. So that's kind of impressive in a way. Um, but Christian Bale plays that type of character very well. He plays a stoic character well. You know, he's obviously tortured because he, you know, he was given this assignment that he didn't want because a lot of his friends were killed by Native Americans and when he tells people that you can see the anguish on his face you can tell that he's not comfortable doing this that he still holds resentment and a lot of this movie is letting go of that um, even in the wife um, role because she literally this isn't a spoiler because it happens in the first five minutes of the movie you know she's grieving she lost her family the movie opens up with a very chilling scene and very graphic violence but the movie after that kind of gets slowed down it bogs down and this is a two hour movie that has no reason to be two hours you can easily shave at least 20 30 minutes off of this movie because there's so many establishing shots there's so many shots where they're showing the grandeur and it is well shot but it slows the narrative to a halt and it makes it kind of like kind of fuzzy like where you you know you kind of lose patience at times for this movie I'm not gonna lie this is a movie me and Jeff saw and both of us were like antsy halfway through the movie because there's so many scenes where it's just either you know going from shot to shot of characters around a campfire characters walking characters looking at something but when the action comes up it is freaking heart pounding and it's very brutal in all honesty the action in this movie is one realistic too profound or maybe it's a, the stark contrast between 
just people like staring around looking trying to get in their heads about what's going on and the violence between people shooting each other people getting stabbed all that all that stuff that happens in a western you know kind of happens in this so this is a movie where I, I don't I don't know this 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 movie kind of reminds me of the lost city of Zed in the fact that it is a slow movie it does feel like an old-school movie where it takes its time to do everything and that's not necessarily a bad thing but where this movie fails or this movie didn't intrigue me as much as the lost city of Zed lost city of Zed always felt like it had a purpose this movie doesn't it just it feels like it's holding on shots just to show its own grandeur so I mean this is a movie where I, I'm, I saw it once I might have to see it a second time to see how I feel then again I did see this at 11 o'clock in the morning and I'm not the best of persons to be watching a movie at that time um, so this is a movie I might do a second review on just because I need to see it again but um the action was really good the acting was really good as well um, the mother of the family there is a scene where she has to come to grips with what happened at the beginning of the movie and it is it's it's kind of sad and it's it's like someone watching someone have a mental breakdown in front of you and Christian Bale's character as Jill does it absolutely well he's just like let her be whatever she wants let her do it and it's fine it's a really good scene actually <clears throat> I will say one of the bad things is not only is the movie kind of slow it drags on with shots that don't need to go on is the subtitling the reason Christian Bale's character Joe gets picked is because he can speak the Indian language well. Okay. Problem with it is whoever did the subtitling for this movie obviously has never seen an anime in the early 90s and even the, the bad subtitling animes from the 90s because oftentimes the texts are really at the bottom of the screen and we were sitting in the back row. So I can only imagine what you would have seen if you were sitting closer to the screen. You would have just been like, and they're bone white, and that can clash with either the, the daylight environment or people's clothing. So at times it was kind of hard to read what the subtitles were because it wasn't standing out. It was melting in, so you people would be talking the Native American language and you couldn't really read what it was saying. So that was definitely not good. Um, a paramount of this movie is the fact that if you can... The ending is a perfect example of the whole movie. You kind of know where it's going. You're kind of glad to get there. You're happy you get there, but it takes too long to unfold. Um, this isn't a bad movie. This is this is actually a movie I, I kind of want to watch again, but I feel like it should be watched in two sittings. This isn't. Well, you should see this on the big screen because when they do the pan out, it is gorgeous. This is a gorgeously shot movie, and it feels like an old school epic. The problem is the storytelling feels thin or the storytelling isn't on top enough to make you feel like this should be two hours. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm probably going to see it again just because I was kind of tired when I saw it the first time and uh, I kind of tuned out at times. but. It was kind of funny because we were sitting there in the theater and there were times where we were kind of like relaxed and just viewing it and then 
there'd be times where the action starts where you just like had to jump up because it was so stark, it was so contrast, it was so brutal and visually visceral. Um, so, um, if I'd have to give uh, Hostels a, a score, I'd probably give it a 6.8. Yeah, 6.8. Um, it's not terrible. There's a lot of fun in it, but it does drag at times. I might have to see it again and revise my score, but that's kind of it for now. Um, coming up, I already posted the my review of Insidious. We have a spoiler review of Insidious where Jeff will be sitting here with me on it. Um, other than that, talk to you later. Until next time.